Coming up on WTV News, one Wartburg alum is back to teach students and he's brought along some helpers to do so. And how are the crops holding up in this drought? WTV heads to a Cedar Valley farm. And Wartburg students have arrived back on campus. How is the class of 2017 handling the transition? All that and more coming up on WTV News. You're watching WTV News, live on Wartburg Television, from the Grant Price Studio. Breaking news, local coverage, and sports. This is WTV News. Good evening, and welcome to a brand new year of Wartburg Television. I'm Ashley Davis. And I'm Nicole Lyons. Wartburg alumni and the chair of Wartburg's Board of Regents, Ray and Judith Bukaski of Chicago, have donated $11.5 million to Wartburg College. This gift is, is to support scholarships for students from the Chicago area with financial need. The McCaskies gift will help the college's Transforming Tomorrow comprehensive campaign, which emphasizes increasing scholarship resources. The funds will create the McCaskey Orange Opportunity Scholarship Program to benefit students from the Chicago area, with preference to students from Roe Clark Math and Science Academy. As the new school year begins, students are back to their campus home. But for the freshman class, this new home is an unknown territory. This week, WTV's Kelsey Bemis took a look at the transition process from high school to college and what it takes to succeed on campus. New home, new people, and new challenges. Just a few of the many things freshmen face when first moving into their dorms. With these changes, new students are bound to have a few questions. How it works, like best way to study, best time to study, who to study with. For those looking to answer these questions, a study released by Time Magazine has found that the summer between high school and college may be the time to do so. The magazine stresses the importance of a few key people in these transition months, such as a student's parents. Parents to know, you know, have conversations, um, not to be over involved, to be that helicopter parent, but I think definitely saying, you know, having a, a values and ethics, you know, moral conversation about these are expectations. In addition to parents, mentors also are important before beginning college. You can kind of start like freaking out a little bit and start having stress and then a mentor is just kind of a way to relax about the whole college process. This year, Wartburg started the Bridge Program, a mentoring project that begins well before the school year. They met people who will, who will be mentors to them, who will help them along the way to be successful. They introduced resources to them. They got an academic jump on things. They have a better idea of here's what to expect. With a little help in preparation, students can begin to stress less and enjoy all that college has to offer. We're here to be students, so I mean, it's always school first, but once we have that taken care of, I mean, we're also, it's college, so we're here to have fun and meet new people and have a good time. Reporting for WTV News, I'm Kelsey Bemis. Counseling Services encourages all new students to attend an Adjusting to College workshop this Thursday evening at 6.30. In response to recent school shootings, Wartburg Security is adding new locks to 144 classroom and meeting room doors. Faculty, staff, and students will be able to lock the doors from their inside of their classrooms in the event of a mass shooting. This allows them to better barricade and protect themselves until further help arrives placing different locks in all of our classroom and meeting room doors. Uh, in the past, and not only Wartburg College, but other schools and universities uh, have, um, uh, the doors weren't able to be lock unlocked or unlocked without a key. Wartburg's international student enrollment is setting records. Wartburg welcomed about 70 first year international students to Waverly this week, bringing the international student population up to 160. This is the largest group of incoming international first years in Warburg history. Associate Director of Global Admissions Rayon Seinschaff says the increase has many benefits. But it's also exciting because, you know, compared to other schools our size, that's really a significant percentage of international students and to add to our diversity on campus, it's just a really great thing overall. Mm -hmm. Coming up on WTV News. What is President Colson tweeting about, and what does he want to share with the Wartburg community? Stay tuned to see what sto why this story is trending. 
And coming up later on Sports Night, armed with a new field and new uniforms, we look ahead to the football team's upcoming season as they look to regain IIAC glory. As we approach harvest season, farmers are still waiting on rain to maintain high yields and supply for the entire year. Welcome back to WTV. I had the chance to speak with a farmer in Chickasaw County about his crop and how the weather is impacting his yields. A farmer's entire year is based off of how well their crops do during the growing season. When the weather doesn't cooperate as planned, there's not much a farmer can do but hope for the best. Iowa's planting season suffered a delay this spring due to record rainfall. That, followed by a dry growing season, puts a fear in the minds of farmers that crop yields may be down. It's put it through a lot of stress. You know, when you get so much moisture early on, the roots are shallow because they've got adequate moisture. Then when it turns dry, they haven't gone down far enough to get moisture and have to make up time to get down to the moisture. And as it dries out, it makes it tougher on that plant. So it's, it's harder and adds stress, and that's never good for good corn yields. Farmers finished up in the fields much later than usual this year. By the time the spring rain had all dried up, the fields were ready for another shower. But now, it's the first part of September and farmers are desperate for rain. With the wet spring we had, uh, we are behind by two to three weeks anyway as far as crop maturity. And so, on one hand, we need the heat to bring this crop along and to try and catch up some of the heat units or growing degree units that the crop requires to reach maturity. So we're glad to see the heat, but to get some moisture with it would be beneficial right now. According to the U.S. Drought Monitor, the state of Iowa is in abnormally dry to severe drought conditions. We will be later fall than normal than what we're used to, and hopefully we can hold off on a frost, which those are the two key things is if we can hold off that frost, get in the field and get it harvested before any snow or adverse weather sets in uh, towards winter, uh, we can still have a very good year. Visit wartburgcircuit.org slash community for a link to the United States Drought Monitor. Over the summer, the Wartburg Bookstore got a facelift and a new name. The newly named Wartburg Store is de designed to be a student's one-stop shop for anything they might need. The store now has items ranging from, a di from diverse apparel to, to even laundry detergent. Store manager Janet Hubner says the project has been a success so far and she is always looking for suggestions to make the store better for everyone. In this modern world of hashtags, tweets, likes, and notifications, it seems like social media has become a necessary tool to communicate effectively. Now, President Colson, or P. Cole, has stepped out into the Twitter world. WTV's Zach Schultz joins us now. Zach, so you had the chance to sit down with President Colson. What's he tweeting about? Yes, I did have that chance, Ashley, and President Colson says he got a Twitter because he wants to share what's going on at Wartburg with the Wartburg community. His Twitter handle is P. Cole. He says a student came up with the nickname and it stuck. P. Cole encourages students to follow him. His Twitter has about 150 followers, and he's tweeted about 40 times. All right, so... I tried to take a snapshot of something Wartburg-y that's going on uh, that I happen to witness or be, uh, be involved in, and then I just posted. I'm not trying to... I, I shared with uh, faculty and staff the other day in a speech. I'm not trying to be either uh, funny or wise. I'm just trying to be informative. So he has about 150 followers, but he's only f following 20 people. Um, why isn't he following more? Well, he says that he's just encouraging students and to uh, follow him and get involved so that they can follow him and find out what's going on on campus. All right, great. Thank you very much, Zach. Coming up next on WTV, a live interview with Wartburg's Entertainment Tonight and the event that has everyone buzzing. And one Wartburg student spoke about LGBT rights in Washington this summer to one of the, mo the nation's most important politicians. Find out more when we come back. Wartburg students, prepare to be amazed. Hypnotist Chris Jones will be performing tonight at 8 p.m. in Newman Auditorium. 
the ETK sponsored event has be been exceptionally popular in past years. Here to tell us more is Kyle Scobie and Caitlin Underwood. Thank you for joining us. So can you kind of explain tonight's hypnotist event a little bit for us? Yeah, basically the hypnotist is just um, what you think of a hypnotist as. He comes in, he puts our students in a trance and uh, kind of gets them to act out funny scenarios, kind of draw a rise from the audience. What should students um, who have never gone to a hypnotist before, what should they expect? Um, they should basically just expect to have an awesome time and be prepared to laugh. Um, it's always a fun event, so. All right, great. And um, so why do you choose a hypnotist to kind of kick off the school year? Um, we've kind of learned over the years that the hypnotist is always a popular event. And so we wanted to kick off the school year right, and we want to give the students what they want to see. And so um, that's just the way we do it, is giving them the hypnotist. All right, who's the, this year's hypnotist, and where does he come from? This year's hypnotist is Chris Jones. He's originally from the Chicago area. All right, and um, for several years, you've had the same hypnotist. Why a new one this year? Um, ETK goes to a conference called NACA every spring, and there we kind of pick and choose who we think um, our students will like best and who we can bring to campus. And we saw Chris at the last NACA, and we all thought he was hilarious, and we thought a change was good for the students and we thought that the students would love them just as much as we do so cool. what are some of the funniest things you guys have seen throughout the years at the hypnotist event um, we've seen stuff like having men give birth we've seen um, yelling at Barney's yeah different things just kinda you know you never really know what to expect with the hypnotist all right, so where and when will this event be taking place um, it's taking tonight at 8 p.m. in Newman Auditorium all right great you. This June, Warburg sophomore Adam Anderson had the opportunity to meet President Obama during LGBT Pride Month. Every year Obama has been in office, he has invited members of the LGBT community to recognize the impact of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender Americans. Anderson decided to write to the president as part of Warburg's Student Senate Political Action Committee. And I thought it was really cool because, I mean, as we are making, like, development, like, on all the issues for equality, they're really, like, really pushing it forward, and that's really cool. Anderson encourages students to keep an eye out for posters around campus listing upcoming alliance meetings and events. President Obama has decided the U.S. needs to act in Syria after the Syria Syrian government attacked its own nation with chemical weapons. Five U.S. Navy ships are positioned in the Red Sea waiting for the go-ahead to strike on Syria. All that, all that is now needed is the approval from Congress, according to CNN administration, will hold classified briefings with lawmakers all week in hopes of reaching a, in reaching a decision. On Monday, 64-year-old Diane Nyad completed her 110-mile swim from Cuba to the United States. Nyad is the first person to ever swim the Florida Straits without a wetsuit, shark cage, or flippers. After com completing her swim, Nyad gave three pieces of advice. We should never give up. You're never too old to chase your dreams. And it may look like a solitary sport, but it's a team thing. Following the controversial resignation of San Diego Mayor Bob Filner, there is a speculation about who will run in a special mayor election. Form Formal Councilman Carl DeMaio and Acting Mayor Todd Gloria both were speculated to run, but have been both announced that they will not. DeMaio narrowly lost to former Mayor Bob Filner last November by about 10,000 votes. The Science Center is now host to a wide variety of animals. Learn why when we come back. One Warburg student found his interest of snakes and reptiles during his time here almost 20 years ago. Today, he's back as a professor and has brought 11 different species here to share with us at campus. And they're closer than you might think. We've got like the northern Australian blue tongue skinks, um, the Dumeril boas, Kenya sand boas, uh, two different breeds of cockroaches, Mexican rosy boas, uh, Australian tree frogs, Pac-Man frogs, leopard geckos. Wartburg has a little bit more than students this year. It's a little uh, 
motley crew of a bunch of different species. So, Dr. Bechtel started his collection in college. I got a snake when I was here. I was go with that. Since then, he there wants to share his love oh, okay. and knowledge of these crawly creatures. These guys are about 25 years old. Turtles are kept out here in the Science Center courtyard so everyone can enjoy them. These guys will stay here until the weather gets too cold. She had babies this year. These reptiles She's are good. also up for rent. Dr. Bechtel breeds and sends them out to classrooms across the country. First, it's just crazy excitement uh, whenever I go into another classroom. After the initial shock and awe of everything, they, uh, people tend to warm up to reptiles. They're, they're not too bad. And he says everything is safe. I don't have anything that's dangerous, so I don't worry about with my kids or my students. Reporting for WTV News, I'm Jacqueline Schutte. So, Justin, Sports that's Night's her. coming up next live. Yep. That, yep, we have a, tonight on, tonight on Sports Night, we have a, we're going we're gonna to preview the football team. They have a, the brand new uniforms as they're going to battle McMurray College this opening weekend. And the women's soccer team kicked off their season at home Friday against St. Olaf. Will they get off on the right foot? Hey. Welcome to Sports Night. I'm Justin Zaccone. Last year, the Warburg Knights football team failed to reach the playoffs for the second consecutive year. So what are the expectations for this, for this year's team? Sports Night's Seth Nunning gives us a preview for the upcoming season. Last year, the Warburg Knights football team started the season 5-2 and two before losing two of their final three games and missed the playoffs for the second straight year. This year, they look to rebound off a mediocre season and recapture the Iowa Conference Championship, something they haven't done since 2012. You know, our goal every year is to to win the Iowa Conference Championship. That's our starting point, and you know that's that's not going to change. That's where we start. If we don't do that, we're we're disappointed. However, the Knights must replace two key players at the running back position: seniors Reese Thompson and Connor Dahlstrom. Looking to take over the workload is sophomore running back Brandon Nomeyer, the team's second leading rusher a year ago. Other holes to fill for the Knights include first team, all Iowa Conference performers, John Orr and Garrett McGrain. I don't know if you're going to replace a guy like John Orr and Garrett McGrain um, from both a, a skill and a talent standpoint, but sort of the intangible things they bring to the table. But, you know, we certainly have guys that are doing a good job of leading. As for quarterback, the Knights have several options to choose from. Senior Taylor Jacobsmeyer, who is returning from season-ending knee surgery a year ago will run the newly installed Wildcat formation for the Knights and will see some minutes at wide receiver. Returning sophomore quarterback Logan Schrader will start the year behind center for the Knights. On defense, the Knights will once again heavily rely upon the third-ranked rushing defense in Division III from a year ago. Last year's leading tackler, senior linebacker Ryan Billings is among some of the notable returnees. Also returning is defensive end Martin Hyatt and safety Jared Waters. Last year's merely average season for the Knights only motivates them more once again to win the Iowa Conference Championship. Whenever we don't win a conference championship here at Warburg, I mean, that's, that's kind of a downfall for us because that's our goal every single year. If one thing is certain of this year's team, it's the desire to restore a program once known for its dominance and to make fans quickly forget the blunder that was last year's season. Reporting for Sports Night, I'm Seth Nutting. Hurdle Field is getting a facelift thanks to an alumni donation. Lotus Neef, a 1952 graduate, graduate donated $600,000 to the college for improvements to the baseball and softball field. The biggest upgrade is the new infield turf. The turf will allow the team to practice during inclement weather and reduce maintenance time. Head coach Joel Hulse said it will not just impact them, but the community too. Um, it's just a win-win situation. We're really excited about uh, the upgrades and, uh, that are happening right now and that will happen, and, and uh, I'd say it's about time. The 15th ranked women's volleyball team are looking to get back in the NCAA tournament this season after last year's disappointing early exit. They kicked off the 2013 season at the, Fu at the Puget Sound Classic in Seattle last week and the three top 25 teams on the schedule. On Friday, they faced off against number two Calvin and number nine Puget Town. In, in the first match, the Knights took the first set 25 17 before Calvin rallied back to win the next three for the win. Against Puget Town, they lost again three sets to one. On Saturday, things turned around for Warburg as they went undefeated against Whitman and number 21 Pacific Lutheran. 
The Orange and Black were returned to the hardwood Friday when they traveled to Augsburg's tournament. The Warburg football team had to wait another week for its season opener, but Waverly Shellrock opened up against a formidable opponent Friday night. High school football back in full swing. We got a huge opening week matchup between Waverly Shellrock and defending state champion Decora. Vikings get it going early as Bryce Pierce finds Michael Suvorov wide open in the end zone. Decora takes a 7-0 lead in the first quarter. The Gohawks get it going, an 80-yard drive capped off by this Jake Velke pass to Eric Willis wide open in the end zone. The Decora lead is cut to 10-7 with less than a minute left in the first half. But on the ensuing kickoff, Hobden picks it up off the ground, runs around the WSR defenders all the way down the sideline to the end zone. Decora takes a 17-7 lead going into halftime. Second half, that big kickoff return seems to have no effect on Waverly Shellrock. They march it right down the field. Belke finds Tommy Bates in the end zone. Decora lead cut to 17-14. After a lightning delay in the fourth quarter of, of an hour plus, the Gohawks could not convert on their opportunities, and Decora extended their 15-game winning streak with a 17-14 victory. The Gohawks are back in action against Class 4A Mason City on the road this Friday. Coming up in the final block of Sports Night, the men's soccer team started their season with a road trip to Minnesota this weekend. Find out how they did. In hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to Sports Night. The women's soccer team sought to start their 2013 campaign on a high note Friday night at, Saint, at home against St. Olaf. I was there to catch the action. The women's soccer team kicked off the 2013 athletics year against St. Olaf at home. Freshman Taylor Woods scored the first goal of the season and of her career in the 22nd minute. Then junior Tia Hagey doubled the lead after scoring on the nice kick from classmate Brinkley Workman to give the Knights a 2-0 lead going into halftime. From there, the defense shut down the Ole offense. They were powered by goalie and Waverly native Katie Reinhardt as the Orange and Black win their first game of the season 2-0. The squad is currently playing Augustana College. Head coach Kirk Artis said at Media Day that the IIAC is wide open this year. The squad looked to get a head start on their competition Friday night at St. Thomas. The first half is mostly silent until freshman Paris Martins connected on the, go on the first goal of his college career off a pass from junior Daniel, Dan Nadeau in the 32nd minute. The time he's even up the game though in the, f in the f 61st minute as they capitalized on a corner kick. That didn't last long, however, as sophomore Zubi Nazari knocked the rebound into the back of the Tommy's goal just one minute in the OT to give the Knights a 2-1 victory. The soccer team continued their Minnesota road trip the following night at Augustana to play yet another overtime contest. After a goal from Dan Nadeau, the orange and black went into halftime with the lead. The, in the second half, Warper couldn't keep their slim margin when the Augies scored a, an equalizer in the 52nd minute. From that point on, both teams only managed a shot and goal each and it ended up with a tie. They won't be out of the land of 10,000 lakes very long as they return to Minnesota Thursday night to square off against McAllister College. Joining me now to discuss the football season is circuit manager Nathan Ford. Nathan, we were at the, we were at the sports media day and every, all the players seemed really fired up about this season. What do you think their expectations are? Uh, absolutely an Iowa Conference Championship, a, a program with so much tradition. Uh, but they haven't won a conference championship since 2010, which a lot of programs, that doesn't seem like a long time. But for these Warburg players, especially the seniors, they don't want to go out having not won a conference championship their last three years. Oh, absolutely. Um, Coe seems, like Co seems like the favorite. Once again, they won the last couple of years. Do you think Warburg can beat them this year? Yeah, I think there's six teams in the, mm -hmm. in the Iowa conference that could potentially win it. Mm -hmm. Coe won last year, but they, they lose a ton of players at graduation. And mm -hmm. Warburg, Central, Simpson, Dubuque, even Buena Vista, I think, are right in the mix. It's going to be a really fun season in the Iowa Conference. Thanks very much. This is Sports Night. Have a good night.